Should you grade your coin? What about taking the coin out of its graded holder? Should you grade a coin that you bought from your local coin shop? What is the purpose of these odd plastic containers? And do you really need them? Are grading companies scamming you? A lot of questions today, folks. And we will answer these questions and talk about the pros and cons to coin holders and more coming up. Hey everyone, welcome to Campbell's Coins. This topic is courtesy of a viewer who is asking me about taking his pre-33 St. Gaudens out of the slab. I gave this viewer an answer, but felt it would be beneficial to the overall audience. This answer covers slapped gold and silver coins alike, so don't think it only pertains to just gold. Before we get into anything, what is a slab? It's called a few things actually, a slab, a holder, it's a plastic encasement of a coin done by a grading agency when one submits their coin to said agency for grading. These are vastly different from airtight cases, but the premise is kind of similar. A coin holder is beneficial in a ton of ways. First, the grading agency is verifying whether or not the coin they received is counterfeit. If they grade the coin, the coin passed their test for authenticity. This isn't necessarily a guarantee, but it's pretty close to one. A coin and a slab from a major grading agency is that grading agency's stamp of approval that the coin in that holder is authentic and the grade they list on the label is accurate. Now, because small PP counterfeiters exist, Slabs can be compromised and counterfeiters can swap the real coin out for a fake one and try to sell the fake one in the real holder on eBay or to a dealer. Sometimes one is able to see where the slab is compromised and the subtle signs that it was sealed back up. But if you're buying online, this can be really tough to see, especially since online sellers rarely photograph the edges of the slab where tampering would be evident. This is why I always emphasize buying from a trusted and legit source who not only has an eye for counterfeits, but tests the coin in the slab with an x-ray machine. Second, the graded holder establishes a grade for your coin. A graded slab tells the world an approximate condition and value of the coin. This is extremely helpful when you or your family tries to sell because the condition gives you a baseline value. This brings us to the next benefit. A coin holder offers your coin protection, protection from the elements, protection from you or anyone else handling your coin. This hard plastic is water resistant. It protects the coin if you drop it. It protects the coin if you drop things on it. Dust, dirt cannot penetrate this holder. The slab can be scratched and cracked, but your coin will still be protected. The slab can be replaced if it has passed its usability, but most hold up exceptionally well to daily handling and even some rough use. The holder can be stacked depending upon which grading agency is chosen, and one can use the slab holders that the grading agency sends back as a storage method. Now, why would people want their coin out of a slab? A lot of people don't like slabs, and I'm not sure I agree as the slab offers the owner a lot of benefits, some of which I just mentioned. Many people want to put their coin in an album like one of these. Coin flippers buy graded coins they think are undergraded, and what they hope to do is they take a gamble to break their coin out in hopes to send it back to the grading agency for a better grade, increasing the value and increasing their profit. Sometimes the same grading agency will grade that coin higher. Sometimes they will grade it lower. As an example of this happening just recently, someone I follow on Instagram posted a story about a guy sending this 1910 $10 Indian to PCGS for grading. 
they graded it unk details cleaned, which means the coin looks uncirculated or mint state, but it was cleaned and now it has that cleaned unk details label. This person cracked it out of the case and sent the coin to NGC, another grading agency. NGC graded the same 1910 $10 Indian proof 62. That is quite the grading discrepancy and a huge value jump. A cleaned 1910 $10 Indian would sell for around $1,200 to $1,400. Sometimes you can get that a whole heck of a lot less at your LCS. However, a proof 62 $10 Indian 1910 is quite different. There are only 50 to 75 coins estimated to survive, and its value would be roughly $35,000. How did the top two grading agencies get it so off? And this isn't a one-off example of this type of situation either. This happens more than people know. And one of the reasons I feel coin grading should be done with AI instead of a biased human. But grading agencies will never adopt AI for coin grading because it would greatly reduce their revenue. This next part is my opinion but I have a sneaking suspicion. Certain organizations and individuals are given better grades for the coins than if you or I had sent in that same coin. This is because these groups have sent in more money to these grading agencies, and these grading agencies want to keep those big spender customers very happy. Again, I'm just speculating, but from what I've seen, I think this might be the case. And I think there are some people who want a nice looking coin, but don't want it in the slab. They just want to hold on to their coin. So I told this person, I don't think they should break their coin out of the holder. Why? There are many reasons. They paid a big premium to get a MS-63 St. Gaudens. If you wanted to fondle your coin, go get a raw one without paying that steep premium. The moment you crack that slab open and start handling your coin, that's when it's depreciating in value. Let's say that a piece of plastic scratches the coin as you smash the slab open with a hammer, or your screwdriver slips and scrapes the coin as you try to pry it open. Now you pay the hefty price for the slab coin and the value of your coin dropped to melt. Okay, catastrophe aside, let's say nothing went wrong and you popped out your coin without incident. If you don't put it in an album, you will add extra marks and dings to the coin over the years, eventually lowering its value. It just, it happens. I bought this 2009 ultra high relief St. Gaudens from my dealer and the person who sold it to the shop cracked it out of the slab. They did it wrong and they put fingerprints all over the coin along with some light scratches. I bought it from my shop knowing this had happened. I was going to use it for my videos and I wanted to handle it. What happened within a month of owning it? I dropped it from a height of one inch. You heard me right, one inch. It landed on the rim of a 2022 Gold Britannia and the lines of the rim indented onto my coin's edge. It's crazy this happened from such a short height. Okay, Campbells, I hear you. But I'm not an idiot klutz like you, and I can handle my coin perfectly over the rest of the time. Great. Eventually, you will try to sell your coin. People might agree it's an MS-63 looking coin, but they won't pay you that amount for it, especially when they can buy a graded version for the same price. They can do all of this without having to send in your raw coin for verification or reholdering. It's entirely possible the value goes up between now when you bought it and selling it in the future, but you won't get maximum value out of your coin if you had just left it in the holder. Now, let's say you cracked it out of its case, you hung on to it for 50 years, you didn't do anything with it, and it stayed perfectly fine, but you pass unexpectedly, or maybe at the ripe age of 90. Now your family will need to sell it. How do they look up the value? They can look up the year, the mint, the design, but it won't give them an approximate value when they take it to the shop. Now they don't know if they're gonna get taken advantage of by a local coin shop. Hey guys and gals, before I move on, if you're getting anything out of this video, hit that like button and consider subscribing. 
Now, why should you never send a coin you purchased from an LCS in for grading? There is one reason dealers, either online or your local coin shop, is selling a pre-33 gold coin or a silver coin in raw form. They know it won't grade well, and they don't want to waste the money sending it in to a grading agency. Coin dealers have seen all sorts of coins in various conditions buying collections from the public. They know if a coin will grade well or not. If they think it will grade well, they will send it in for grading. They are not going to sell a raw coin in MS66 condition for the same price as an about uncirculated coin when they know they can get it graded and get more money for it. It's as simple as that. This is true whether we're talking gold or silver. Common date coins are often sold raw, as are cleaned coins. If they can tell a coin has been cleaned, having it labeled as cleaned, because the, the grading agency will label it cleaned, having that stigma on the holder, they know people will not want it as much. But selling it as its raw form for a good price will clear it off their shelves. I would like to emphasize, this is not to say that buying raw coins, either pre-33 gold or silver, is not a good deal. It can be. Buying raw coins allows new collectors to get into the hobby without paying super high premiums. Since these raw coins may look nice, but they've just been circulated a little bit, maybe cleaned, people can physically touch these coins without worrying about lowering their value further. Many of these raw coins are not sold as cleaned, nor are they labeled as such, but more than likely they are. The same goes for coins which were once used in jewelry. These are called X jewelry. They might look scuffed up, but if you're just starting out, it's a great way to get a pre-33 gold piece without forking over a ton of cash. And I can tell you, I have purchased many raw pre-33 gold coins, knowing full well the coins won't grade high nor favorably. I did this for two reasons. First, it was a rare coin with few examples remaining. Or second, I got an incredibly good deal on them, paying melt or just over melt for it. Sometimes it was both. My point is, just because the coin is not graded doesn't mean it's not a nice looking coin or a good deal. Knowing all this information though, gives you some bargaining power. A common date cleaned or ex jewelry gold coin should sell for melt or slightly above melt price. Remember, pre-33 gold is not pure gold and their weights are slightly off from their modern bullion counterparts. What if I don't care, Campbells, I wanna break my coin free? It's your coin, you're free to do with it whatever you want. If you have an expensive coin, I would suggest watching some videos on how to best crack it out of the slab without damaging it. Or if you get some slab coins of little value, practice on those. One of my first videos on this channel was an experiment in coin grading and to call BS on many of the coin roll hunting channels out there. So I decided to cut this huge rant that I just made out and put it into its own video. If you're interested in learning about coin roll hunting scams, especially the YouTube channels who perpetuate them, stay tuned for that video. Getting back to my point, I apologize for the rant, is maybe you can find some cheap slab coins like this and practice opening the slab so you don't damage your expensive coin. If you don't care, then who cares what I have to say? There are a lot of good reasons to not crack your coin out of the slab. If you have a rare gold or silver coin, I would not crack it out of the case. If you have a common date gold coin, I would not take it out of the holder either. There is just too much value lost once you have done this, and who knows what will happen in between the moment you take it out and the time you decide to put it back into a new one. That is another tiny point. No one is going to buy a coin from you if you're putting it back in the same slab you cracked it out of. Remember my brief mention on counterfeiters? Plus, someone buying it from you will have to send it back to a grading agency to be reholdered, and that costs time and money. Maybe this go around the grading agency thinks your coin is a 62 instead of a 63. One major reason you should buy the coin and not the grade. There are two pieces of advice I would give new collectors. One is to look out for fakes. They are out there and they are pretty convincing to the uninitiated. This is why I only buy raw coins from sources I trust because they discern the difference by looking at them 
and testing with expensive machines. Counterfeiters are making fairly convincing copies of these coins with the same gold and copper compositions and dimensions as the originals. So they will pass all the machine tests, but the design, the look is slightly off. This is why it's important to be able to spot fakes by looking at them. If you're not experienced with spotting a fake by looking at it, you're safer buying graded coins. PCGS and NGC are the two main grading agencies. CAC or CAC has just started grading coins and I hope they overtake PCGS as the premier grading agency. They used to follow me on Instagram but have since unfollowed and I'm not sure why. Fake graded coins are out there which is why it's always good to verify the number with the grading agency's database and to buy from trusted sources who check these coins when they buy them. Second is to avoid common date coins. Unless you're buying high graded common date coins, you might have a hard time selling them and you might find the price doesn't move a whole heck of a lot. I like buying pre-33 gold coins with not only low mintages, but low survival numbers. A key date at a popular mint does not hurt as well. If you have any questions, you can send them to me at campbellscoins at gmail.com. I only have a few social media accounts, Facebook, which I don't really use a whole lot, and Instagram, which I'm on there fairly regularly, and this YouTube channel. I have a couple of things in the works which will add another media to this list, but look out for accounts pretending to be me. I won't reach out to you telling you you've won a prize. Um, just look for weird usernames, crap like that. Your time is your most precious asset, and I appreciate you spending it here with me. Thank you all for watching. This is Campbell's Coins, and that is my two cents.